Hi everyone, I am so excited to be speaking to you all today about an ongoing collaboration in our lab to study the gut metagenomes of South African individuals. This work was conducted with a big team of collaborators, but I'd like to especially thank Fiona Tamburini, who is the lead on this work from the beginning, our PI Ami, and our main collaborators in South Africa, Voke Udwaran and Scott Hazelhurst. So like many STEM disciplines, most studies focus on the human microbiome interface at the global West, where populations are highly industrialized, living in urban areas with high consumption of fatty foods and easy access to antibiotics. So this visual from Almeida et al. summarizes the number of metagenome assembled genomes from around the world. And as you can see here in red, the US, China, and parts of Europe are really highly represented. Conversely, there's a small minority of studies that have evaluated the microbiomes of communities at the other extremes of resource access, such as hunter-gatherers and agriculturalist communities in Tanzania and Madagascar. But these tiny number of studies really cannot be used to represent a continent of over 1.2 billion people. So this lack of research becomes a really big problem when we think about the direct relationship between the microbiome and human health. So as communities undergo industrialization, they typically see a decrease in infectious disease risk and then an increase in non-communicable disease risk like heart disease or obesity. And we know that the microbiome has a relationship with the presence and severity of these diseases. Additionally, studies such as Harris et al. here on the right have shown a difference in microbiome composition in non-responders, NR, and responders, R, to various vaccines. So altogether, our lack of comprehensive characterization of the gut microbiome across Africa really compromises our ability to directly assess the relevance and applicability of different therapeutics for these populations. So we had the opportunity to begin a collaboration with a team at the University of the Witwatersrand in Johannesburg, South Africa, with the goal of studying the microbiomes of adult South Africans. So this collaboration was made possible by the H3 Africa Consortium, which is a continent-wide consortium involved in a range of projects studying genetic and environmental risk factors for disease. And then ARP study in particular was part of the AWIGEN project, which is an H3 Africa project studying risk factors for cardiometabolic disease. So leveraging existing study sites and participants from the AWIGEN project, we focused on two South African communities. So urban Soweto is a township bordering Johannesburg, while rural Bushbuck Ridge is a former apartheid homeland in Northeastern South Africa. And as you can see in the table, Soweto is much more dense and it also has an increased proportion of households that have access to piped water and flush toilets. So from these two communities, we assembled a cohort of 190 adult women and collected single stool samples from each individual. And these were then profiled with 16S and shotgun metagenomic sequencing. And you can use the QR code here to find our collaborator 16S work, but I won't be covering those results here today. So after we classified our shotgun data, we found that the microbiomes from individuals in rural Bushbuck Ridge here in darker purple had significantly higher alpha diversity than their Soweto counterparts. And this was somewhat expected as prior works have observed decreased alpha diversity with increased industrialization. And we also identified a number of genera that were significantly enriched in one community over the other. For example, rural Bushbuck Ridge is enriched for Susanata monis, a hallmark genus that's lost with industrialization, while Soweto microbiomes have taxa like Bifidobacterium, Bacteroides, genera that have been shown to increase with industrialization. So we sought to contextualize these observations with communities at more extreme ends of lifestyle and resource access. So we used publicly available shotgun sequencing data for industrialized cohorts in the US and in Sweden, as well as for a cohort from rural Madagascar and the Hadza hunter-gatherers in Tanzania. So compositionally comparing these metagenomes, we found that the South African cohorts here shown in purple were intermediate between the more industrialized cohorts in blue and the Tanzanian and Malagasy cohorts in red. And what I find especially interesting here is that the South African cohorts didn't seem to cluster on a simple continuum um, along this industrialization axis, but rather occupy a unique position in multidimensional space. So we then sought to obtain a measure of how much unclassified diversity might be present in the South African cohorts as compared to the other cohorts. And so by quantifying the proportion of shotgun reads from each group that were classified, 
we found that the less industrialized communities had a smaller proportion of reads that classify to reference databases. And so what this indicates is that there are taxa in these communities that are not available or um, represented in public reference databases. And so we wanted to get a glimpse into the taxa that were not present. Uh, so we decided to perform de novo genome assembly on our sequencing. But we wanted the best chance of generating complete contiguous genomes. And so we supplemented this with nanopore sequencing on some samples from Bushbuck Ridge. So previous work in our lab led by Eli Moss developed a DNA extraction and computational processing workflow for generating complete contiguous bacterial genomes from stool samples. And so using enzymatic lysis to extract high molecular weight DNA, that's then nanopore sequenced, we then use a workflow to base call reads with guppy, assemble them with canoe or fly, polish contigs with short and long reads, and then circularize these genome scale contigs. And so from this work, we were able to circularize a number of genomes, including the first circular genomes from any taxa. And many of them, as you see listed here, are uh, pretty typical Western organisms like Bacteroides. So through long read sequencing of our South African samples, we were able to assemble highly contiguous genomes for taxa that have very few or no public references. And so here I'm representing contigs as blocks of color along a circular axis with long reads represented in green. And we are really excited to generate a single contig treponema genome, treponema being among the hallmark taxa that are lost with industrialization. They're incredibly difficult to isolate in culture. And so our treponema assemblies represent the very first complete contiguous assemblies from the human gut. We also assembled complete genomes for B. vulgatus and Prevotella, which are two taxa for which very few complete genomes exist due to their highly repetitive genome structures. Notably, the first closed genomes for Prevotella were only assembled last year using nanopore sequencing. So we also observed a number of highly contiguous genome assemblies for organisms with very low GC content, such as those pictured here, which all fall in the range of 25 to 30% GC and have very poor coverage with Illumina contigs, which you can see in gray. And so when we actually looked at the GC content distribution of our Illumina reads versus windows of nanopore reads from the same sample, we see that nanopore here in dark gray is capturing a much higher density of reads at this low range of bacterial GC contents. So you can see that here highlighted in red. Now this increased portion of low GC reads um, is coming from the nanopore sequencing. And so this really gives us the ability to assemble really high quality assemblies for low GC taxa like mycoplasma, things that would be completely missed with shotgun sequencing. And so importantly, these complete assemblies from a microbiome really give us unprecedented insight into potential genome structure and function of these microbes. So since long reads are capable of properly assembling mobile genetic elements into genomic context, um, we can surpass that classically difficult feat with shotgun sequencing um, since mobile genetic elements are often repeated within and across bacterial genomes. So if you look at this Lentisferia genome, for example, and annotate certain mobile genetic elements, which are here in purple, you can see that that green nanopore assembly includes dozens of additional transposases, four integrated phages, all of these elements that did not assemble into the shotgun assembly. So when we identify and annotate regions in all of our nanopore genomes that were not assembled into their short read counterparts, we see that these regions are highly enriched for mobile elements and features of mobile elements like transposases, recombinases, integrated bacteriophages, antibiotic resistance genes, et cetera. Um, and so these genes and elements can have really important impacts on bacterial adaptation and their phenotypes. And this really highlights the increased importance of using long read sequencing in these contexts to allow us to really move beyond just classifying taxa in a microbiome and more towards identifying the functions and components of a metagenome. So to conclude, we performed the largest gut microbiome shotgun sequencing study of adults in Africa to date. We found that these microbiomes don't exist on a simple continuum of industrialization, but that they're underrepresented in reference databases. So using nanopore sequencing, we can recover complete genomes of novel taxa and identify structural variants and mobile genetic elements. So ultimately these methods will provide a strong foundation through which we can explore the vast diversity of microbiomes of understudied communities. With that, I'd like to thank the many, many collaborators that were involved in this work. 
Uh, first, with a special acknowledgement to the Bot Lab, I'd like to thank Fiona Tamburini, who led this project for many, many years, as well as Ryan Brewster and our PI, Ami. I'd also like to thank our many collaborators at WITS in Johannesburg and at each study site, with a special thanks to Scott and Bokeh at WITS. With that, thank you for your attention, and I'm looking forward to discussing this work with you.